What's up, big guys? It's Mac. Hope you guys are well. This is a quick video about the Nintendo Switch's Super Mario Odyssey. Guys, we just put this down because I want to break this because this game was just too much to comprehend. Guys, Super Mario Odyssey, I'm telling you guys, it is awesome. You guys have to play it. I mean, um, I'm going to go quickly go do a quick overview of the entire game. Just so you know, there, there is a few spoilers, so if you haven't played the game fully or if you haven't completed it fully, uh, bear that in mind. I will be, you know, sort of explaining, a bit, um, also I will be sort of going into the sort of end parts as well of the game. But guys, this game, Super Mario Odyssey, one of Nintendo Switch's most awesome games you would ever play. Um... Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's the Mario game, right? So they usually give one per console. So they don't always do multiple uh, main franchise Mario games on a console. So, guys, it will probably be the most played game on your Nintendo Switch. Um, and there's plenty more games to come for the Nintendo Switch. But, guys, Super Mario Odyssey. What a throwback to the classic and to the modern generation of Mario games. I mean, wow. They literally... Uh, how to explain the awesomeness of the game, I'm going to try in as few words as possible, but guys, I mean, um, right from the beginning, I mean, I'm going to go through a few of the negatives and then a few of the positives, yes, just so we can sort of build, do a bit of compare and contrast, because a lot of people have been trying to find faults in the game, purely because, um, they, I mean, they're trying to say why it's overrated and stuff like that. I mean, um, I've got a few notes here, so I'm going to be looking down on some of my uh, notes here, so sorry about that, but they're with me. But basically, um, first of all, the lack of um, the hub world. I mean, the hub world is generally what you would see in like Mario 64 when he came out of the painting and he sort of was circled around the castle and then jumped back into a painting to go into a level. Uh, the hub world is a bit like Super Mario uh, Brothers 3, where you sort of go through the map and you navigate to different levels. That's the key feature that they took out of this Mario game. And a lot of people were saying, you know, they don't have that. It feels weird and it's not right. Put it this way, guys. Do you really want to be like Master of Four, where you constantly grab a star and you jump out and then you go do the whole little dance thing and then you go back into the portrait to then do another level? Do you really want that? Do you constantly want to be going in and out of portraits and jumping out into the hub world and going back into level constantly? Because that's why it happens. Bear that in mind, guys. In Master 4, you constantly had to do that. You had to constantly, when you get a grab a star, you had to jump back out. And it was a bit annoying. I mean, trust me, the, the amount of moons that you're going to collect, by the way, I like the way they did that whole moon versus the sun thing, because obviously the suns were in Super Master 4, and this one's more about moons. But the fact that there's so many moons in the game, uh, to basically having to collect one and then jump out and then go back into the portrait or to back into the level from the hub world to get back in and start the whole process again it would take so long that it will, you know, it will basically put you off getting stars because that's what I remember I used to do in um, Super Mario 4 I used, to, I used to be put off putting getting certain stars before I've got a specific star that I was looking for because I don't want to go for that one and then um, see this one, pick it up and then get chucked all the way back out and then go back in. It's pretty much like um, you lose your checkpoints, you go all the way back out and you lose the position you were in. So purely for that basis, I think the ruining, um, taking away the entire hub world and having a more of a linear path where you just could navigate through kingdoms, it, it's, I think it's a great, great idea, guys, because um, it keeps the games uh, moving and the amount of moons, I will get into that, by the way, guys, but the amount of moons you're going to collect in this game, Trust me, you don't want to be keep going back and forth into a hub world. You don't need that. And the way they did the navigation of the, all the kingdoms, I mean, they're huge as they are anyway, so don't worry about that, man. There's plenty to explore. Um, uh, a major mechanic, things like the mushroom, uh, the flower power, um, things like one-up mushrooms, all of that has been removed. Um, a, a major game mechanic has changed, basically, by removing that. A bit like how they did in... Um, in Zelda Breath of the Wild where they sort of took away all the dungeons and stuff like that and got rid of that I mean it's good I mean it's, it's progress they're changing it up they're, they're keeping it fresh um, in the franchise and they have like a coin system where you pick up coins and then you you're constantly picking up coins so whenever you die you lose I think it's about um, eight to ten coins you lose in one go and then you jump back into the game 
But put it this way, I never ever lost enough coins to go down to zero and see actually what happened. So um, put it this way, I don't think it's a problem. You pretty much have infinite lives in that sense because you're always going into different worlds, you're picking up different coins, you're constantly picking up coins wherever you go and you always have enough to keep you going so you never really run out. So I think it's quite a good way of actually speeding the, up the game as well so you don't constantly die and you know lose your lives and game over and all that business you don't need to deal with that but anyway that's another uh, negative that was there um, hope that sort of balances it out uh, what else was there camera controls and motion controls um, camera controls I didn't find that to be an issue it was pretty much uh, spot on I mean um, you can slow it down you can zoom in from the back you can zoom in from the front but in all 3D games you were gonna always have an issue with camera to a degree because obviously there are going to be certain particular paths that you have to go walk through and it's going to be very narrow very tight and um, you're going to wish you had that perfect angle of the camera but it's a spinning camera 360 all the way from the top and the bottom so it's not like you can um, always have the perfect shot but for the majority of the time i found it was the perfect shot um, definitely a lot of a big improvement from super mario 64 so you know i take it i think it was was just just fine guys uh, well, it was motion controls. They did shoehorn in a couple of motion controls into the game. Uh, I think it was about just two moves with the cappy. Um, don't worry about that, guys. To be honest, I never ever had to, you know, felt the need to actually use uh, the motion controls for those two specific moves. I never felt the need to actually use that that specific move. I think it's one of them was to for the cap in the angle to the sky, um, forward angle. But there's so many other moves you can do with the cap that basically combats. Um, does, you know, basically it makes the need for those specific moves redundant. You don't really need to do those moves. There's so many other moves you can do with the cap and you constantly um, have ways of attacking um, enemies. So uh, with that said, uh, the motion controls I would say is not really a must. You can play perfectly well with your pro controller or the, the two uh, controller Joy-Cons together as a controller and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, if you play three joy cons with two hands, actually that gives you a bit more movement because I find in some of the bosses it's really fun to do the double smack with when you're when you're punching certain bosses. You'll see that in the game. But yeah, I mean it, it's it's not a problem. You can play perfectly well with the pro controller, and I absolutely love the fact that you can do that. Uh, what else? Uh, the game music, um, not to everyone's taste. It's got hasn't got much of a classical uh, music tone to it. It tends to be a lot more. Um, current music, a lot more like, I don't know, dance, sort of, um, like, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's like, um, like um, it's got that, that new modern vibe to it, uh, a bit of uplifting, a bit of a vibe, um, chilled out music in the background, it's not to everyone's uh, taste, it's not your classic Mario theme music that you sort of remember from the previous ones, but with the 2D aspect of the game, with, when you jump into the 2D aspects of the game, wow they drop in the 2d bit i mean the 8-bit music and the 8-bit graphic styles when you jump into specific pipes that i have the sort of pixelated pipes you go into it and it becomes a pixelated level part of the game and the way it wraps around the certain areas of the game it's absolutely flawless and the way they did that was just spot on and they sort of touched on the old marios a bit of a, a love letter to the original uh, mario fans and i think they sort of pulled that into the new franchise perfectly and when they put those um, 8-bit sections into the game they had the 8-bit music as well it became all um, that type of uh, music as well so I think they did a fantastic job with that as well so I mean um, like I said that's all the negatives I could sort of think of um, a lot of people have been uh, messaging those specific uh, negative negative um, points on uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that but Anyway, I, I hope that, that covers it um, and let's get into the positives now because um, guys, I mean if you didn't even hear from those negatives how I, how they became positives, um, you, you know that the positives are going to be a huge list. So let's get into that guys. Here are the positives of Super Mario Odyssey. So first of all, the kingdom sizes themselves. Wow. I mean they've got uh, such a beautiful variety of uh, kingdoms so much to do so much to explore I mean it's not as open as the Breath of the Wild but wow when you could go into a distance you could jump into these little like viewing goggles where you jump into it and it sort of zoops up uh, into the sky and you can sort of view, uh, view the entire area a bit like how you used to press um, 
um, the up C button on Super Mario 64 and you can zoom into his eyes and you can sort of navigate everywhere, everywhere and sort of see the entire world. Um, you can do that by you jumping into this robotic uh, binoculars and it chucks you into the sky and you can see the entire level and everything you look at you're thinking I could go there, I could go there and I could go there and that reminds me of Zelda Breath of the Wild the fact that you can sort of point out location and you can end up going there as well and find enemies and just to look at that you see you, you see the entire world and you're like wow I can't wait to explore this world and that's, the, that's part of the excitement and also you can also if you look closely you could possibly even see the moons now guys when it comes to, comes to the moons, the amount of moons in this game, wow. I mean, it's around 64, when you played that, you felt, you felt like uh, at times that there's a, quite a lot, and at times there was uh, not enough, right? Um, 120 stars, I think, was the total um, stars you can pick up in Super Mario 64. In this game, you've got about... Well, let's say about 40 to 80 to even about 100 uh, moons per kingdom. Just comprehend that. The amount of sheer moons per level, per area, compared to Super Mario 64. I mean, they literally done justice to the exploration aspect of the game. You don't have to follow a linear path. You don't have to follow the specific path to specific stars. And there ain't just six stars in the world. You pick up moons. I love the way they did that whole moon thing, by the way, because obviously stars were super rested to four, moons were natural progression, it seems like. So this is why I also feel that it's a natural progression from super rested to four. It's the true successor to super rested to four, but on a different level, on a different scale. Um, super Mario Galaxy was something. It was beautiful. It was fun. It had the whole motion control aspect, which I actually enjoyed in that specific game. But it was very um, a a sort of Wii experience, Nintendo Wii experience, but the this this Mario, I mean I, I haven't played Super Mario Sunshine that much, it's, um, I don't really like that one as much, but this is completely like taking Super Mario 64 elements and just took it to the next level, and you'll see that with the sort of um, throwbacks that they do in this game as well, so anyway, so what was it talking about? The amount of sheer moons to pick up. Everywhere you go, there's always a moon to pick up. And whenever you hit a moon, it's like, wow, I picked that one up, let's move on to the next one. And you can move on to the next one. You don't have to jump out of the world and go into some sort of hub world and jump back in to go back to that location. If I'm if I'm going towards a specific moon, I know the mission, I know the boss I'm heading towards, and I have to bump off into a corner and I find something, wow, straight away, pick up the moon, move on to the next one. That's what I absolutely love about this game. You can pick up moons left, right, center, and it doesn't matter how much you pick up, you would never pretty much uh, finish them anytime soon. So I pretty much lineared the entire game, went as far as I can, right to the end, complete the boss and start the final bosses. But on the way, I basically, each time I jumped into a world, I sort of explored it, got as much as I can, got more than what I needed, the minimum, um, explored it until I got bored of the level or I felt like I covered a quite a huge aspect of it. I want to move on to the next one, I just carried on moving, but there's always ways for you to jump back in and start playing those games again, the, those those worlds, those additional moons, you can pick them up, you can explore the entire world, there's so many mini games within each world, there's so many additional stuff to do, there's mini games that have online uh, records, you can do all of that, there's a lot to do guys in each world, each kingdom, so it's amazing, and New Donk City, um, what an amazing uh, throwback to the entire New York aspect with the human aspect, you know, with the Mario game. I think they did it really well. They don't sort of intervene into the game that much. They're sort of just there mumbling and stuff like that. And they're just background characters essentially. But there's so much to explore and those levels are just beautiful. The final boss level when you're playing Bowser, wow. I mean, I love the entire story by the way, guys. I mean, I've never been a big fan of majority of the stories. But in this whole aspect, it's like it's all about the wedding and I love the way Bowser did that whole, like obviously it's like a whole new aspect. Um, he's kidnapping her, but this time it's to get married. Um, they've got the whole wedding amiibo thing going on. Mario got his white tux on and everything, you know, Bowser got his tux. And um, each world you go into, each new kingdom, it's um, you, you get these three or four bosses that sort of float around and each time you go to a different stage of that world, you have to uh, fight a boss, fight all three of them at one stage and then you move on to the next one. I mean, the bosses are just 
so different, very, a um, lot more challenging at times as well. Sometimes a bit easy, but they have such a variety of bosses, by the way, guys. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an absolute joy to sort of play these uh, different types of uh, bosses, fight through it. Um, the experience is just, it's just so enjoyable. I mean, you're constantly just smiling throughout the hours, oh, just loving this game. I played it over a space of, um, I didn't want to finish off it too, um, too quickly, so I spaced it out. I played it over several weeks. Um, I actually completed the game a lot sooner than I actually did this video, guys, but uh, due to um, scheduling issues, I had to basically push this video back. So I'm just trying to get this filmed now as soon as I can before Christmas at least. But wow, guys, it was just so fun to play. I seem to go back into the game and revisit it and play and catch as many and get as many more moons as I possibly can. But that's the most uh, fun aspect of it. You can actually go back and there's a lot more replay value in this game compared to a lot of other games. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, just so much fan service, guys. They got the whole 2D aspect, which absolutely blows your mind when you play that. It goes back to the hearts, back to the classic 2D Marios of the, the Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. And um, whilst doing that, it's got that whole new modern twist to it, the whole new graphical upgrade, and it's just, uh, it's just, it's, oh, it's just beautiful, man. It's just beautiful. Uh, what else is there? Is it a true successor to Super Mario 64? Definitely, I think uh, they did a really good job in that. Um, the whole idea of actually using Cappy, the, the, it just freshens up the game, guys. What a positive addition to the game, to the franchise as a whole, the whole attacking aspect. You don't really miss the flower power and all that stuff because you take over so many different characters, like the Hammer enemies, you know, the Goombas. Um, the turtle guys, there's so many enemies they could take over and so many objects they could take over and do so many things with that um, the, 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 the hammer guy becomes like the guy that can throw pans and all that in the in the that, that, um, sweet candy um, Level again the kingdom where it's all chocolates and foods and candies They've got like the Goombas walking around with um, chef hats and they're chucking um, pans and all that so there's just so much different ways of attacking whenever you take over a new character or a new weapon there's um, or new object there's just so many different ways of attacking with those specific stuff and there's so much stuff that you can take over you got the whole t-rex and all that you know it's like it's endless amount of different ways of experiencing the game and you could take short cars you could um, attack enemies um, in different ways and obviously when you've got all of that out of your system you jump out back into mario mode you've still got cappy so there's always something for you to to use so you don't get you don't feel like you miss the whole flower power because there's a lot of things you could shoot there's a whole tank you could take over and shoot uh like water guns um water gr grenades into the you know, to the enemies and i think that was just that was just spot on guys i mean i think they just um yeah they definitely hit the spot with the correct amount of weapons they could sort of use at your disposal by just taking over specific stuff so yeah i just think um you won't miss the whole cat suit and the flower power and all that stuff uh, well, so two D, yeah. So um, they also had this really cool thing where you could jump through portraits, and you could sort of um, it's like a shortcut. You sort of see um, you get a specific secret moon uh, through the portrait uh, stuff, uh, like I think the portrait exit or secret exit, and you can see a glimpse of the next kingdom that you're gonna visit. And it's just so cool the way that they did that whole thing. It just feels like the world's so big, and there's so much more still left to explore. It's like a little tease and stuff like that. So. I just think that's just um, awesome when you do that. Um, right at the end, after you complete the main boss, you got the whole amazing um, world where you sort of follow that guys. But you go back to Super Mario City 4 and you visit revisit Peach's Castle. It's exactly how it was in Super Mario City 4, but just with super super fresh graphics, with beautiful graphics. Game was done beautifully. It looks amazing on on the the docked version as well as the actual. Um, TV mode as well, um, the dock uh, mode as well as the handheld mode, so just beautiful graphics. And they did the classic thing that I just absolutely was missing because whenever you used to pick up a star, they had that, 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 they had that, that music in it and did that whole thing. I mean, they did that in this game with a bit of a remix twang to it, and I absolutely loved it. I mean, wow. Whenever I, when I got the star for the first time, I was like, "Is this really happening?" They literally took me back to Super Mario 64, back to my childhood, and 
Uh, wow, I mean, to, to play that in a new modern version with the whole star music and everything in 2017 in Super Mario Odyssey. I mean, not only did they touch upon the retro classics like Super Mario 1, 2 and 3, the whole 2-bit Mario aspect, not only did they do that, but they mastered the 3D aspect, they've gone beyond Super Mario Galaxy, but they also followed on from Super Mario 64 and took sections of that and actually implemented the entire castle hub into like the outside part of the castle so you can revisit it because they actually got a level for that. Wow guys, and they also have a 2D world dedicated to that as well, so if you go into this 2D world at the end, the credits you can do the whole 2D aspect as well, you could play through that, but they have a 2D Mushroom Kingdom as well, we can play through, and it's a lot, it's a, it's a more of a larger level of the whole 2D uh, stage, uh, rather than the actual smaller stages that you get throughout the entire game, which are a lot more small um, portions of the 2D aspect of Super Mario. Uh, but anyway, guys, it's a must game. If you haven't got it, if you haven't got Nintendo Switch, it's the perfect time to pick one up because you're not going to get a better game to play on a console um, in the first year. I mean, wow, like, to my Odyssey, the fact that they released it so soon into the Super Nintendo Switch's lifespan, I think it's going to prolong the, the Switch's lifespan for so long. And if you haven't picked it up, this is the time to pull the trigger and get the Nintendo Switch just purely for this game guys because it is not one to miss you can't miss this game guys it's so much fun um, so much replay value it's just a pure joy to play I absolutely loved it I mean tell me, tell me what your thoughts are guys if you guys enjoyed this game if you guys have bought one if you guys are playing it if you guys are stuck if you guys have clocked it are you guys even um, anticipating that you're gonna buy one or you're not sure um, but let this be a um, hope this helps you guys in making that decision if you haven't got one you guys you have to pick it up seriously you're not gonna regret it it was heaps and heaps of fun and um, yeah one of the the best platformers that I could think of is Super Mario and um, they did the franchise justice put it that way the underwater aspects taking over fishes and all that spot on Anyway guys, that's my review of Super Mario Odyssey, definitely it's a must buy, do pick that up. Sorry I know the video has been quite long if you stuck through the end, really appreciate it guys. Don't forget to like that video if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Do check out my other videos in regards to Nintendo Switch uh, reviews, there will be more coming out. And until next time, take care guys, this is Mac, peace, out.